wanted to do a quick video. It's going to be really poor quality because it's my phone and not the iPhone. And because I don't have a selfie stick and it's very wiggly. So just wanted to show here's Cash in the barn. Eating some hay. Saying, hey, what's up? And then over here is Tango. He's our old guy. He's 20-ish. He's rescued from a kill pen. Right? He's a good boy unless you ride him and then he likes to go backwards. He thought he was retired. You're almost retired, aren't you, buddy? You haven't been ridden in like three months. Anyway, they're doing what they do best, which is eating. They have a whole huge pasture back there. And they stay in their stalls where it's nice and cool by choice. Where they can just get free food handed to them. And uh, the hay we bought, we didn't want snakes because the guy before, let's see if I can turn this around. The guy before, it won't let me turn it around, had it like in the barn on the floor. And we thought it would be really snaky because we've already seen about eight snakes. So, um, so we keep it in that shed over there, which will probably double as a milking barn soon. Because our milking goats are coming in the next month. We're going to get one doe and milk and two babies coming in a few weeks. And then in mid-June, mid to late June, we're going to get seven more goats. Uh, six babies and one dough and milk. So we'll have two doughs and milk this year. Uh, one's a Nubian, uh, nope, Nigerian dwarf, and one is a mini mancha. And the mini mancha right now is producing about uh, six cups once a day, and then she has her babies on her too, so her babies drink the rest. And then uh, once they're weaned, we will have about that much twice a day, um, although the breeder um, knows that we haven't milked before and so she thinks we'll get more like four to five cups each time because we don't know what we're doing yet but we will figure it out uh, we have our milking stand we got it from ebay it's a wooden one and we got it put together but it's in the office which is way the heck over there and down and then around and yeah so it'll be a fun heavy thing to carry over to that shed but we're gonna have it designated as one side is the milking area and one side is going to be for the hay for now. That's what we're going to do. And then this part, let's see how great the lighting is. We are going to transform this lovely thing into a, a totally enclosed goat shelter for the night because most of our goats are really small and they're babies. So um, we're going to keep them totally enclosed in here for the night and it's going to be a lot nicer than it is right now. Um, Christine's going to put up some wood, like plywood back here and cover all this in because goats and metal are not a good mix. They'll just uh, bash it in pretty quick. Um, and then we're going to uh, put in hardware cloth or chicken wire or something to make it totally enclosed because we have a lot of predators out here in Texas. We have bobcats and raccoons. I don't know if a raccoon would hurt a tiny baby goat, maybe. Um, and we have coyotes, we hear them every night, and uh, occasional mountain lions. So hopefully they won't be way up here because we're kind of close to the house, but uh, you never can be too careful. And our livestock guardian dog is still a puppy, so um, she's pretty useless right now, but we may end up getting another dog who is older from a friend who has an extra one. And if he's in here and he seems reliable, uh, we may or may not keep them enclosed at night, but for now it seems like the safest bet. Um, and then we know that they're safe and I don't have to worry at night because I tend to wake up in the middle of the night worrying about somebody. Um, so, and the fencing has started going up. We found a copperhead in this area that was the only poisonous snake we've seen so far. But this whole area, um, past the tree where the shed ends is going to be, uh, goat fencing. And then you can see where that corner post is there. That'll be the end of it, and it'll go all the way across, follow the poles down um, to the end of the hoop house. And then it'll come across over here, almost to the horse fencing, and then it'll be going back over to 
the covered area. So they'll have lots of shade because there's two nice oak trees here, um, and which we are going to protect, by the way, from the goats because we do know they're destructive. Um, so we'll cover those so that they don't kill the trees eventually. Um, and then we'll have the nice run-in area that we're going to enclose. Um, and then we'll probably end up, once we know the goats and they know us and everybody's good, we're going to release them to the back pasture where it's a lot more brush because goats are browsers and not grazers. So they like to eat, um, you know, scrubby stuff. Um, they love poison ivy. Uh, they love just a bunch of scrubs and trees. So um, they'll probably eat my dewberries in no time, all the dewberries that are around here. Um, but we do have so many blackberries and the blackberries are kind of overgrown and growing out of their fencing and so uh, we'll give them the opportunity to eat all of that yummy stuff too. So um, it's going to be a fun adventure, um, but we have to get the fencing up ASAP. It's going to be uh, five foot high, uh, no climb horse fencing, um, which is the narrow two by four squares instead of the, the total squares, it's gonna be the rectangles um, because our goats do have horns and because um, it's just safer when you have babies because if the babies get their heads through the fence, then that's perfect time for a predator to come up and bite their heads, um, which unfortunately does happen. So we just want everybody to be as safe as possible and we're willing to pay a little bit more to have to have something that works out for everybody. Um, and yeah, it's gonna be another adventure out here, but it's such a beautiful day and I wanted to take an opportunity to, um, to show y'all how nice it is out here. So, all right, until next time.